Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. I've actually been chomping at the bit to do this video, so I'm doing it early, like early, early, like 2.30 in the afternoon, um, because this psalm and what we're going to cover aligns perfectly with this morning's morning devotion, a very present help. If you don't remember what morning devotion was or didn't see it, it was covering John 16.33. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but Jesus says in that case, but be of good courage, I have overcome the world. During this time, in this world, in these things that we're going through, he is a very present help. Psalm 46, 1. God is our fortress. To the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah, a psalm for Alamoth. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed. Now, this is before the New Testament, but the New Testament talks about the same thing. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, this is all this is all repeated in the New Testament. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Powerful stuff. Covenant blessings are not meant to be looked at only, but to be appropriated. Even our Lord Jesus is given to us for our present use. Believer, thou dost not make use of Christ as thou oughtest to do. When thou art in trouble, why dost thou not tell him all thy grief? Has he not a sympathizing heart? And can he not comfort and relieve thee? No, thou art going about to all thy friends. Save thy best friend, who is Jesus, and tell him thy tale everywhere except into the bosom of thy Lord. Art thou burdened with this day's sins? Here is a fountain filled with blood. Use it, saint, use it. Has a sense of guilt returned upon thee? The pardoning grace of Jesus may be proved again and again. Come to him at once for cleansing. Dost thou deplore thy weakness? He is thy strength. Why not lean upon him? Dost thou feel naked? Come hither, soul. Put on the robe of Jesus' righteousness. Stand not looking at it, but wear it. Strip off thine own righteousness, and thine own fears too. Put on the fair white linen, for it was meant to wear. Dost thou feel thyself sick? Pull the night bell of prayer, and call up the beloved physician. He will give the cordial that will revive thee. Thou art poor, but then thou hast a kinsman, a mighty man of wealth. What? Wilt thou not go to him, and ask him to give thee of his abundance? When he has given thee this promise, that thou shalt be joint heir with him, we are joint heirs with Christ of heaven, and has made over all that he is, and all that he has to be thine? There is nothing Christ dislikes more than for his people to make a show thing of him, and not to use him. We see that everywhere today. He loves to be employed by us. The more burdens we put on his shoulders, the more precious we the more precious will he be to us. He told us that he was here to help us. Why don't we ask him? Let us be simple with him then, not backward, stiff or cold, as though our Bethlehem could be what Sinai was of old. Guys, why don't we ask the Lord for the help we're looking for? Why don't we take counsel from God? Why don't we reach out to him? Look, and I'm adding myself into this. I include myself in this. I'm asking myself these same questions. Why don't I take more counsel from him? Why don't I bring more of my problems to him? Why don't I ask him more about these things? Well, for the most part, we've been told not to. I mean, you just do a simple search and people are like, oh, don't bother the Lord with that. No, bother him with it. Show him that you believe him and trust him by taking every little thing 
to him. No matter what it is. No matter what it may be. No matter how much you think that the Lord isn't going to pay attention to that. Oh, well, the Lord can't possibly save me. Really? I had somebody say that to me one time. Oh, he, he can't forgive me. Really? Even though 2,000 years ago he forgave the whole world, he can't forgive you? What makes you so special? I told him that. Oh, what makes you so special? What makes you so high and mighty that you think that your sins are better than everyone else's, or in this case, worse, and cannot be forgiven? What sets you apart from every other human being that has ever lived, is living, or will live? They just looked at me. I was like, you're not special. You're not different than anyone else. You're not set apart from anyone else. The same God that forgave all of our sins is the same God that forgives yours. And the same atonement, atonement that he gave in shedding his blood on the cross 2,000 years ago that paid the debt that I owed for sin and all of my sins and all the world's sins for all men, as the Bible says, paid for yours too. There is no, the Lord can't forgive me. The Lord has already forgiven you. You need to go claim it. You need to go to him and ask, Lord, save me. That type of statement comes from a place of pride, believe it or not. It comes from a place of of starting to get into narcissism. Self-righteousness. I'm too dirty for the Lord to clean. Oh no, absolutely not. In the Old Testament, we have a vision. Somebody was watching and they saw this priest. He's got a dirty robe. Take it off of him put the clean one on him. And his robe was covered in filth. They changed it. That's how easy it is. The Lord has done it. He's already taken care of it. It's already been completed. It is finished. So why don't we go to him and present these things to him? We have a question about what we're supposed to do in the future. Take it to the Lord and ask him. I do. Did it recently. We have a problem or a question about a loved one or a friend or a co-worker. Take it to the Lord and ask him. We have a problem with our physical health. Take it to the Lord and ask him. Now, keep in mind, these things may not be answered the way we think they should but he will answer them in a perfect way. A way that will benefit us the most. Glorify God in your requests to him over all of these issues. Let us not let the sun go down on any problem unless we take it to the Lord. Unless we lay it out. Lord, I, I can't fix this. I'm realizing now I can't fix anything. I need you to fix these things. So Lord, make me to bring them to you so that I don't stumble and fall so that I don't put unnecessary roadblocks in my own path so that I don't fall away so that I don't stop believing so that I don't lose faith going to other people for the for those things instead of going to the Lord it shows a lack of faith if we trust him for everything else why can't we trust him for that and so let us do that let us trust him for those things and believe that what he said he's going to do he will do this is part of the Christian life. This is part of growing in faith. This is part of sanctification. We're learning these things. We're being prepared for heaven. Learning to trust him for all things and in all things. Lord, make us believe. Make us to trust. Make us to bring everything to you. Because you are more than capable of handling it. And you are worthy of our praise, of our worship, of our thanksgiving. And you are worthy of glory. And you are worthy to deal with our problems because only you know the perfect way to deal with them. Lord, make us to do this. In your name, amen. Take your problems to the Lord. Don't hold on to it and marinate it. Lay it at his feet. He, he will deal with it. He will take care of it. Do we believe? Do we trust him? And do we believe his word and trust his word? That's the key to all this. Do we believe and trust the holy word that he has given us? I think if you struggle with that or if that question caused you to pause, read the Bible more. Do more studies. Dig deeper. You will find reassurance in the scriptures. You will find proof text. You will find him responding to your specific and personal situation in the scriptures. And then it will make perfect sense. And then you will believe Life just gets easier and easier the more you turn it over to the Lord. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.